we all know how important it is to be aware of mental health and well-being, but do we really know how to deal with it and talk about it? I wanted to ask how many of you ask the question uh, to people, are you OK? Because when we ask people, are you OK? Our natural reaction is, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You OK? And sometimes when we say that, that we're not really looking into what does that mean? What is that saying to us? And how can we really um, find out what's behind what's happening to somebody? So, for example, I'm quite larger than life, as you may have gathered. Um, but there are times where I might be quite quiet and I might be quite reserved for some people. So they might be looking at me going, oh, Trace is a bit quiet today. What's wrong with her? You OK? And I'll go, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm all right. But am I really? So there could be that underlying thing behind it to go, actually, I do really want you to ask me again. And I really do want you to find out what's behind that message. So you can see it in people's body language and their eyes and, and, and other things. But when it's over a video, it can sometimes be quite difficult or over the telephone because you're listening to their tone of voice and you're not quite sure if someone's going high pitch. Are they, do they really mean that? So with the things that have been happening this year, with the lockdowns, the isolations, missing out with time with family and friends, um, it's, it's been quite difficult um, for a lot of people. And mental health and well-being has shot up uh, no end this year. But what I just want to ask you is what do you see in this picture? Rabbit, duck, bird and rabbit? Duck with a long beak, lovely. Okay. What does it tell you? Everyone sees things differently. Everybody sees things differently. Yeah, absolutely. And how everyone has different perspectives. I can see what you're writing in the chat function, which is fantastic. Thank you. And how can we deal with that? There's no right or wrong. I can see someone's put there. Thank you, Lauren. Different perspectives of the same image. Yeah. Because we're not the same. And that's a great thing, personally. Every picture, uh, every person tells a different story. No illness or disorder is the same. We may have the same labels, but it doesn't mean that we're the same person. So whether you have um, a particular uh, mental health illness or whether you have a disability, uh, it's, it's looking at the person rather than the illness. And sometimes that's really, really difficult when someone says, oh, hi, yes, I'm bipolar or hi, yes, um, I have psychosis um, or I have eating disorder. Um, we, our natural reactions are to then label you under that particular illness which is what we need to try and get away from when someone is is opening up to let us know that which is really important these are just some of the mental health and well-being programs that we've run for some of our clients how do we talk about mental health so i've put a few things up here um finding the right setting which is really important um it might be the right setting for you but is it the right setting for them and that's key to starting anything off when you're asking somebody you okay yeah I'm all right are you really yep and if someone has that little bit of a pause you know there's something else after it so it's really looking into what's the area that you're going to be talking to them is it going to be via a zoom call or adobe or um, any of the other platforms teams that we use um, is it that you're just going to speak to them on the phone? Have they got lots of people around them? Are they out at the moment using their exercise um, time that they're allowed to go out, depending on what tier they're in? Uh, are they actually at work, depending on what work you do? Being open and honest goes both ways. Make sure that they feel comfortable, that they can actually tell you these things and it won't go any further. So setting those ground rules for me is really, really important. Um, saying to people, you know, what we're saying here is just between you and me. However, if I think there is a risk to your health, um, uh, as in you want to com complete suicide, then I have a duty of care to highlight that to HR or further, depending on your, your, your uh, policies at work. 
Think about the language and the tone of voice that you're using. Oh, yeah, I know. I felt like that last week when we talked about such and such. Oh, God, wasn't it awful? Um, really listen without judgment, which is really hard because we just we just want to help people. Those of us that do this sort of thing, we just want to help. So you want to give advice. But what they might need is just for you to offload. So being really aware of that. Know that you don't have all the answers because you won't. No one has all the answers. Not all the doctors um, or any of the psychiatrists or anything will be able to have all the answers to everything, unfortunately. And I can see um, Joe's just said, I find so few people are able to be in someone else's conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. Signpost them for some support. As I just mentioned there for the, the outside supports that you've got out there with Mind and ACAS, um, which, you know, for, for those of you that use ACAS a lot, there's some great advice on there. But from a mental health side, Mind is fantastic. Um, think about where you are located around the UK or in Wales or Scotland and look into some of those resources that you've got locally. Tap into those. It's really, really important to find out what you've got locally that can support people. And let them know that you will check in with them if you want to. You have to think about your own self-care. Those of you that are mental health first aiders, you understand that you can't go and support someone if you can't look after yourself first. So it's exactly the same as if we were going on a plane. Oh, wouldn't that be nice right now? Um, but if you were going on a plane, you have to put your mask on first before you help somebody else out. It's the same when we're talking about self-care. You've got to think about your own self. How is your mindset at the moment? Are you in a difficult place where you can't help and support someone else? Now, that's very similar to how we talk about well-being to people. What's your well-being like? Because they're two different separate subjects. And again, you know, depending on what sessions you're running yourself or if you get external providers like ourselves or anybody else, think about those two are very, very separate. And I want to see whether we can just do something very quick. An individual exercise for you to get to do something. If you've got a piece of paper, if you've got just a couple of minutes to doodle. I can put the whiteboard back up if you want to doodle on there, but just get a plain piece of paper, start drawing on it, doodle, write something else down, make something out of the paper. This is my piece of paper and I'm just going to quickly make something. Try and clear your mind while you're doing it. So it's like a little bit of mindfulness. But let's see what you can do. There's my little one. And what I would do is I would say to you, I would advocate you to um, have a look at where you go from today. Think about your own mindfulness, how you can take just a couple of minutes every day to do something that's right for you, because then you can go away and support other people. Thank you very much for your participation.